Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we'll be going over my Splatoon 3 patch 2.0.0 hopes. Specifically for weapon balances and such. And other things like matchmaking and gameplay, just anything that annoys me in this game. <laughs> some of this some of this is thinking pretty wishfully, like glitches removed, especially Tabrella class weapons. Yeah. If ever, more communication options on the D-pad, <laughs> no, never happening. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of this is wishful thinking, but never hurts. And um, for those of you who don't know, this is coming out. The patch 2.0.0 is coming out December the 1st. Hopefully the patch notes are coming out very soon, so I have to rush this video. But until then, let's get into the video. First up, we have changes to matchmaking slash gameplay. Uh, first one is allowing for deranking if a player is 50p in debt and uh, loses another game. It's pretty obvious. A KO can now count as a gold medal. That's just gonna help. That's just gonna get you more points in a series battle if you happen to KO. If deranked, the player would go to the previous rank's middle rank. So um, this should probably be below this one. Because it's relating to this one. But that doesn't really matter. Here are a few examples. So if they're in like A minus, they'll go to B rank. If they're in B minus, they'll go to C rank. If they're in S plus zero, they'll go to just S rank. If they're in S rank, they'll go down to A rank. So they won't go to A minus nor A plus. They won't go to they'll go straight to the middle one. And if they're in C rank, then they're just gonna have to suffer, I guess. Um, lag reduced, especially to Brella class weapons, and glitches removed, especially to Brella class weapons. <laughs> Brella weapons are... <laughs> yeah, that's about that. Uh, passive special gain in, cow in tower control for the team controlling the tower reduced to be less than the, the team defender. Oh yeah, um, this is theoretical. All theoretical. Um, none of this is actually happening. Probably. Um, I don't have that much faith in the Splatoon developers, but... Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, and if you rank up enough to get any of the ranked badges, you'll just get the ranked bad imme badge immediately instead of having to wait for the rotation to end. Because that's how it used to be, and that's just ridiculous. Uh, more communication options. Changes the points for special. Now this is pretty basic. Splash 210p, I mean 200p to 210p. Gootuber from 200p to 210p. This one I'm not entirely sure. This one we could probably go without. Um, and I'll, that's because of little ten, ten to missile nerfs. But if those little nerfs aren't gonna happen, then this is gonna happen. This is probably good. Hydra Splatling, also something that I'm not entirely sure if it needs to happen, but might as well just just in case. 190p to 200p, and then Rapid Blaster from 200p to 190p, because Triple Ink Strike for Rapid Blaster. I don't feel like it's going to get that too often. Uh, changes to sub-weapons. Toxic Mist. Um, this one I just stole from Pochala, so check him out. Link in the description. But um, tempo added temporary disruptor effect if a player is hit directly, like a direct hit with the disruptor. No, I mean, not the disruptor, the Toxic Mist bottle thing. If it hits them directly, they'll get a temporary disruptor effect. And it won't be as powerful as the actual disruptor, because that would be a little broken. And it'd only be like for like four seconds. Oh yeah, and also increase the velocity at which Toxic Mist is thrown by 25% to make it easier to direct hit them. Because it's Toxic Mist is a little slow right now. Both of those were Protoller's ideas, which I just stole. Uh, Sprinkler. Um, removed the Thought Painting stage entirely. This one, this one is me. I just decided to remove the Thought Painting stage. It was too slow, it wasn't useful, I just removed it. Increase the time spent in this first painting stage by two seconds. First painting stage is a little too slow, decided to increase it by two seconds. It doesn't really matter. Um, Angle Shooter. This one, this one, this one has a problem. So for the English Shooter, we increase the length of point sensor effect by 20 frames. Increase direct damage dealt by 2 for a total of 32 damage, just underneath the 3 shot. Indirect hits will now do 15 damage instead of no damage. Well, you know, like, if you hit, if you run into the line, it now does damage too, so. 
might as well. Uh, allowed for angle shooter to pierce through opponents who were directly hit. So essentially right now, if you get a direct hit enough to do the 30 damage, it will just stop with the person. This will allow it to pierce through and allow indirect hits or maybe even more direct hits for people behind them too. Which I thought it already did, but um, it is it should now. This is theoretical. I really want this to happen though. Changes to special weapon. Big bubbler. Oh boy. Shield degradation when on top of towers sped up by approximately 7%. Uh, I just kind of made up a number here. So it'll sp spend approximately 7% less time on tower. That's... Yeah. I would personally really like it to not be on tower at all. But we saw in the trailer that it's going to be on the tower again. Because the, the mini splatling put it on the tower. So has to be on the tower. So I kind of went with that. Crab tank that we move, we reduce the HP to be 470, is, which is the same as the Booyah Bomb has, in case you didn't know. So it's 30 less HP, and the max damage reduced to 28 to be closer to Splash. Not sure why I did that, just felt like doing it, so that way it does less object damage. This is also a kind of a buff to Big Bubble, so. Yeah. Also, we might need to reduce. HP might need to be reduced a little bit more, but I felt it was fine since, especially since Crab Tank can actively shoot while Booyah Bomb can't. I just still feel like Crab Tank needed less HP, so it's just what I went with. Also, I use a weapon with Crab Tank, so eh, whatever. Tanta missiles. Oh boy, this is where I, this is where I focused a lot of my special weapon attention to. 150 direct damage direct 150 damage direct hit radius reduced by 35% in size. So that makes it a lot less likely to hit someone and one shot them essentially with tenta missiles. It's stupid how it was able to do that. And now it's much smaller. I don't actually believe they're gonna remove it. I hope they remove it. Uh 50 damage flash hit, which is a thing. It's just Unlikely is reduced in size by approximately 8%. Once again, made something up here, made the, up a number, but it needs to be smaller. Same thing with the 30 damage, 30 damage splash hit radius. Needs to be smaller, so I just... 10% seems like a decent amount to make it smaller by. Um, added 30 sets... <laughs> what? Added 30 frames, or half a second, immediately following missiles in which no additional points or special can be gained. So this is essentially like doing ink storm. You can't paint to grind another ink storm. This is half a second where you can't do that. Just kind of made it up. It could also go well if there are any missiles act. If your missiles are still actively coming down on the enemies, then you can't paint. But I thought half a second is fine enough. This is why reflux and flingza don't have points of special knocks. Oh yeah, and make heavyweight when swimming. Swimming in ink is now a heavyweight weapon. For those of you who don't know, you can actually swim in ink with the special, with tenta missiles active. You can swim at the speed of like a normal weight weapon, which is kind of weird. I always just found that weird. They seemed a little too big for that. Alright, reef slider. Reduced end lag by 10 frames. Kind of made up a number here. Um, I don't really know how much end lag reef slider has. I don't use it that often. So I made, it, made up a number here. Added 15 frames of lethal bomb invincibility after using the Reef Slider. For those of you who don't know, you can just throw a, reef, a bomb where the Reef Slider is going to end up. And if you time it just right, you can kill them instantly. This immediately following the invincibility frames ending. So, yeah, this is 15 frames which you can no longer do that. This is tacked on to the addition. This is as soon as the end lag frame starts. So when, after the big explosion, boom, boom thing. <laughs> and then added 16 frames in which one gets 19 ability points, ability points, or one pure of sub resistance after using leaf slider. So they have an entire second where they have a pure of a bit of, they have a pure of sub resistance to get hit less. This overlaps with the 15 frames above, so 
if you hit them with like a oh yeah and this is only for lethal bombs so boss bombs and such will not be affected but splat bombs calling bombs i don't know how you would do that though and suction bombs will be affected ultra stamp Increased direct hit damage from 100 to 120. I'm super surprised it's only 100 damage. I didn't know that. Uh, increased splash hit damage from 40 to 50. Allow it to two shot. It's very, very, it's very close. It's barely even a two shot. But I can also see this becoming a 45 hit. But. I just decided to make it 50, because why not? Um, Zipcaster. I'm just kind of buffing the weak ones, the three weakest. Zipcaster reduced. Um, this one's going to reduce the base passive ink loss per second by approximately 2% for a total of 8%. So what that is, is there's a passive ink loss when you have the special active. And once you run out of ink, you get recalled. So essentially what that is, is you remove the passive ink loss, reduce it by approximately 2%, and then increase the range at which the zip castle can zip to by approximately 8%. I find myself constantly using the zip castle and just barely being out of range of my next zippy place. So, this is just mostly for me. I just kind of want to zip further just for fun. Changes to abilities. There's only one change to ability, and I'm sure you. Well, actually, there are two, but. The other ones are on changes to main weapons. Changes to abilities! Last Ditch Effort can now only add a maximum of 12 ability points, which is half of what it used to be for Ink Saver Main, Ink Saver Sub, and Ink Recovery Up. No changes to when LDE active will be made, no other percent of total L uh, ability points active. So, LDE will still be active at the same time as it always is, and the total percentage, like, for those of you who don't know, it goes from 1 ability point to 24 ability points, depending on how much the enemy team is in control. It will still kind of do that, just it will go from 1 ability point to 12 ability points. Maximum, so. And that's what I predict will happen, or hope will happen. None of this is a prediction. If I was predicting, I would be doing... <laughs> I'd be doing a lot less quickly. I forgot to, I forgot to add something. Ninja Squid will be reversed. I hope will be reversed to the same amount of reduction in swim speed as it was in Splatoon 2. Changes to main weapons: Blaster, Range Blaster, and Luna Blaster. The whoa <laughs> did not mean to do that. And Luna Blaster, get me out of here. How do I? <laughs> All right. And Luna Blaster, aka the the directable ones where you can one shot blasters. I'll get a slightly increased effect of intensify action. This should technically go up here, but I originally put it down here and I didn't feel like moving it. Yep, that's that's that. L3 nozzle news. This one is just removing jump RNG. It's the only boss shooter to have jump RNG. It's kind of weird, and I just think we should remove it. Same thing with Octobush. Inkbush does not have Inkbush has enemy ink immunity when holding down the ZR button and dashing, as I call it. I don't actually know what it's called, so I'm just going to call it dashing. So let's give Octobrush the immunity when dashing through enemy ink. Oh yeah, and miscellaneous changes that I just kind of felt like adding in. Online tabletop battle while waiting for matchmaking. It's, it's bound to happen. Come on, it's perfect. Uh, allowed players to change the probability of specific music playing in the lobby. For those of you who don't know, there was a there's specific music who, that plays in the lobby. Some there was, there was lobby specific music. There's music from Splatoon One and Splatoon Two. It's just essentially allowed the probability of these music, of the music playing. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Oh yeah, and quick access to recon and lobby for the active maps and rotation. Duh, and that's that's all the things I added in, all the changes I made. Yep. I hope to do more patch changes hopes eventually. I will also go over the patch changes, patch notes and changes when they actually come out. Like, probably tomorrow, I hope. I, w I would actually love for it to be tomorrow. It's the 26th as I'm recording this, so 
27th, which is three days off from when the patch goes live. Why not? Well, hope to see you all next time. Hopefully I will do it then. See you all next time.